zombie movie. And it's more than a horror movie. I, I don't like horror films, but it's fun to do one, actually. Action and fiction, it's, uh, it's entertainment. The idea for this movie I got two years ago, approximately. Um, a friend of mine in LA asked me if I could come up with some ideas for a horror movie. Um, so I started you know, playing around with ideas and I came across with this Second World War uh, story and I started thinking what if I combine horror elements to it. That's something we haven't seen too much in the, in the movies nowadays. So, so I did. I wrote the script the way I usually do, which is really fast. And no, I, I never do any outlines or anything. I just go along with the script and the mood. And, and, and I use music a lot to inspire me in the certain moods. So, like always, I set up my uh, music collection in four hours. And four hours I was writing each day for four days. And then I got the script done. Burn to your side, I'm trapped in silence. Just a possession is the sex. I'm at Marco and the uh, they shot for one week anyway and we saw material and then we realized how talented he is and this film can be a great film and we got hooked. Marco is a very talented young director. You can see that in the test footage that he shot for this film over a year and a half ago. I've seen a lot of new talent come up over my almost 30 years in the business and it was just remarkable as to how he could put an image on the screen and make it work. It is action, it is adventure, but it's also got a human element and, and the dramatic side to it, and also the international side to it. You know, what, what's happened with, you know, three different countries meeting, which is, uh, you've got an American, you've got a Finn, and you've got a Russian who are struggling su for survival in this story. And I think that's really interesting to see the difference in the script that Marco's written, uh, you know, about that, you know, the cultural differences that come about. Stone's War was uh, really challenging, fun, and, and just, once again, like the script process and development, pretty crazy. So, you know, each day was a new, because the 30-day shooting schedule is crazy. You can't really do a movie like this, so complex and so you know, bizarre in 30 days. But yeah, we're, we're, we did it. I play uh, uh, Captain Martin Stone who's uh, American, and he's sent into Finland with his troops to find a Russian bunker. They also bring along some reporters who are American, and they don't actually know why they're there, but they're with uh, these Finnish officers, who's uh, Laxo, played by uh, Miko, and Captain Niemi, and there's kind of a mystery about the whole thing. And then as the film uh, develops, they find they're in this situation which is quite unnerving because th there's like some sort of an experiment that's gone wrong. He had heard about me and he had seen the first film I did and he had seen the poster shot of that film and he liked the way I looked in the poster. 
So he called me and I said, I'm doing this film and I, I'm not sure if I have a part for you, but I, I would just want you to read it. And then I read the script and I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like uh, zombies in war between Finland and Russia and Nazis and these bunkers. And I was like, this is impossible. This is, this is not real. And then Marco, when I met Marco and he showed me some of the stuff that he had done and uh, some of the drawings for this film and the storyboards. And uh, I understood that we're not doing a historical drama here. We're doing something fun for the kids to go and eat popcorn with and, and like an entertaining film. And that's how I decided that if there's any role for me, I'd want to do it. You have to ask Marco, but I think it's so that he actually thought of me when he was writing this. That's at least what he told me. The atmosphere on, on set changed, you know, in a, the good days, bad days. Uh, mostly, I think people were having fun, I truly hope so. My character in Stone's War is Lieutenant Loxo. He's a Finnish soldier, he's a very common man. Not, not a big warrior, he's a more human, he's a thinking person who uh, gets scared and uh, insecure in, you know, at times. And, uh, but in that way, he's, uh, I think, you know, people can relate to him because he's a, he's a normal person. Roll camera! Kola's real name is uh, Nikolai Dolgov, and he's a private in the Soviet army, and he kind of accidentally bumps into these, these guys and, and uh, starts to, uh, to save his own life, he decides to help the others. We have beautiful leading actress Magdalena Gorska, and uh, she brings the kind of the you know, sensitivity to the film, which I think was a nice ad. Everybody expects that, of course. There has to be one woman, so we have one. I'm Dasha. It's a girl from the border. She's a bit scary about everything. <laughs> she had some very, very bad experience with Finns soldiers on the border. And she knows the secret. Actually, the greatest thing was that the first scene that I did with uh, Magdalena was a scene where I shoot her in the head. <laughs> so uh, that was like, hello, I'm Samuel, hello, I'm Magdalena. <laughs> and, that, and that was the... Captain Niemi is in charge of the mission in, in Russia. And, uh, Obviously, everything is going uh, to the wrong direction, and uh, nobody believes what he's doing, and uh, everybody is uh, pretty much turning against him, and uh, it's going to the wrong direction. Working with this kind of international crew is great, because I love that. I've done it before, and. I, I think it's the best thing is to combine forces, to, you know, the best talents in the, across the world and put them in one and you hear such a great dialogue because all these words, hello, what do you want in this special effect? And then there's the other guys who don't really understand what they're saying. But everybody understands each other in the end. And it's just, a, you know, it's a great thing. I would not want to be in Britain and, and, and hear, well, also, what do you want now, Marco? You want this or this? Well, you know, it's, it's nice to have this whole, you know, group of weirdos uh, making, a, you know, their best. I'm sorry to say weirdos, because I mean that in all best sense of the word. So, you know, it's a, it's a really wonderful thing. Shh! Guys! Now I know how the actors feel. Mark 
Marco's a very exciting director. Um, he's not been tainted yet by the industry or the disappointments that can come along. So he's quite exciting to work with and you know, very imaginative and very inspirational at the same time as well. I, I, you know, I feel like he's, it's his first film, but I also feel like it's my first film and he, he gives me that kind of a, a fresh feeling, a, a pr approach to, to the job. Working with Marco is, is great experience and I really hope that we will do many more films. It's, he's talented, he is, he is a wonderful person and, and a wonderful professional. What else can you ask? He's like the Duracell bunny on cocaine. So he, he has the most energy that I've ever seen in a Finnish man, because usually Finnish men are like, a bit quiet and stand aside, but, but this guy is just filled with energy. He doesn't uh, alienate himself from the, the crew, actually he like kind of wants to be very much a part of everyone and he doesn't lift himself up, he, 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 he's one of us. He's very spontaneous, he is uh, full of energy and he gives this energy to the actors. He is great, he's, uh, he's never nervous, he's always happy and uh, always funny. He's actually directing me much more than uh, anybody else before, so I enjoy working with him. He thinks very fast to how to build a scene, how to, which angles to use, where to, what to cut away, what to use and and that gives you a security as an actor because you know that when the material is done and the editing begins, you know that this guy has already thought about what's, what he's going to use from the shots. I love the fact that Marco is a young director who's very, very excited and filled with you know, imagination and, and uh, you know, childishness in a good way. They understand my jokes, which is 1% from the population of the world, which understands it. So we, I think it's a great thing. I really want to work with these kind of people who understand me. Sometimes I feel like this is a, you know, high school when everybody's having fun and all of a sudden we met a great team and we play basketball pretty much. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. But then again it feels like, you know, every, this is a danger zone and everybody who steps one step fall down and die. So it's, it's kind of, you know, it, it's a weird place and I love everything I see. It's the, one of the greatest things is to come to the set and you see it and you say, oh my god, this is so damn good. I think we had a dream crew in this, with some small mishaps, otherwise we had pretty much the best people we could. This is uh, definitely the best set ever. <laughs> the greatest thing for me shooting this film is when you see those images which you had in your head comes to life right in front of you exactly the way you want it. That's the most greatest thing. Stones Wars, I think the main audience is just people who like, you know, this kind of popcorn entertainment films. It's not a scary movie in a, in a sense that it's a horror film. Uh, it's, I think it's more adventure thriller, uh, which has gothic horror elements to it. The audience that we're primarily going for with this particular movie is probably the young action horror crowd. That's primarily male but it could be that with the very attractive cast that we have in this movie we are going to bring in a significant female audience that is interested in seeing good-looking young guys shooting zombies. Ready? And... I think that I'm not even going to be able to see this film when it's finished because I lose my sleep. I, I don't like horror films, but it's fun to do one actually. Ready? Does the film have a deeper meaning? And I, I think the answer for that is yes. 
it's up to whomever to find it because I have left clues and hints into the film. If they understand those hints and clues, they will understand what I'm really trying to say with the film.